this week on Canadian Whitetail. Quite a bit of growth under the ground already. This is the same spot that we had three encounters with the tipped out five last year. The, the tipped out five buck that he was hunting last time, he's still alive and he is still kicking the crap out of us. Deer hunting is a lot like life. It's not easy. And if you want results, it's a lot of work. And like life, there's no shortcuts, no workaround or easy way to your goals. And if your goal is to hunt the biggest free range whitetails that have ever walked, it's 365 days a year of preparation and dedication. For us, that's all fueled by a passion for whitetails and to share these hunts and the stories of these deer on film. As do-it-yourself hunters, success means a never-ending cycle of getting ready, scouting, and setting up until all of that work is not work anymore and it simply becomes your lifestyle and what you do. And you do it so that when the season is finally here and it's time to head in and hunt, you have a chance. A chance for that one moment, that one second that we all dream about. A chance to experience that feeling that when all your hard work pays off, and that giant steps out. Gorgeous animal, unbelievable, incredible deer. Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail is proudly brought to you by Ozonix, undetectable, undeniable. Limb Saver, products that work. Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Excalibur Crossbow. The most trusted crossbows on the planet. Under Armour. Never detected. Always lethal. Elite Archery. The world's most shootable bow. Central Boiler Outdoor Wood Furnaces. Performance and value by design. Bog Pod. Monopods, Bipods and Tripods. The Whitetail Institute of North America. Premium food plot seed, specifically engineered for whitetail deer. And by the Heater Body Suit, number one in cold weather hunting gear. Regardless of how you look at it, consistently taking big mature deer takes a lot of hard work. Sometimes that hard work can span over several years. This week and next, we have the absolute honor of sharing with you a story of a deer that definitely made us work. Maybe the hardest we ever had, and it's a buck that we simply called the Tipped Out Five. The Tipped Out Five always showed potential, and that potential came in the oddest, outward lean, thin horned, and tall time frame, and he'd been a regular in the area of our north plot for years. Dozens and dozens of days in the stand in 2014 netted us only three encounters, and each time there seemed to be a problem. It was either too late in the evening, or he'd be out of bow range into the plot. And the last encounter ended the worst possible way. The tipped out five spooked. This year, however, we were rebuilding the plots and hoping he was still alive in 2015. Well, it's mid-April and we're back in the plot getting ready to work. These alfalfa plots that we had put in here, but they're about five years old now, so it's time to redo them all. The disc we have isn't quite heavy enough to break this up again, so we're gonna rip it up with the cultivator. Let those clumps dry out, come back here in about a week again and run the disc through it and then see where we are and what we have to get done for seed. Well, we just finished getting this north plot worked up. It's still pretty clumpy, but we're going to leave it dry out for about a week. And if we don't get any rain, then we'll come back in here and run the disc. 
It's been about a week and a half since we got everything well plowed up. We brought the disc down here. So now we're gonna go to try and break up some of those big clumps of grass, try to get things smoothed out. Our disker is not exactly new, but it does a pretty good job. So it'll take a couple times until everything's nice and smooth, but the better we get it prepared, the better it'll turn out in the end. Steve and I actually just staked the line across there because the south third or quarter of it, we're gonna put into uh, winter peas. We're not gonna do that for two weeks until about June 15th. The rest of it, we're all putting into the alfalfa rack plus, which uh, is primarily alfalfa. It's got clover and chicory in it as well. This is the first year we're gonna use it, and it's specifically designed for whitetail. It's got higher protein than regular dairy alfalfa or any of the other alfalfas you can plant. We just got all the Alpha Rock Plus seed spread, and uh, Stevie's just packing it there. It's, it's pretty dusty and pretty dry for packing, but at least it'll keep the seed underneath and it's not gonna blow away. And uh, we've got our plot marked off here, so when we come back in about 15 days, we're gonna plant the winter peas here. So our plan is that those winter peas are gonna hold the deer late in October, into November, and through the winter. And the alfalfa on the north side is gonna be a really good nutritious food source for the deer come late summer once it's up. We're back, it's the end of June. You can see that line where we partitioned the two plots. So we're gonna see those winter peas down on the stand side. We've used the generic seed, the farmer's seed before, and we've used proper seed like Whitetail Institute winter peas, and you just can't compare it. The Whitetail Institute has spent several years developing their seeds specifically for deer. And that's something that you just can't find at your farmers down the road. We just came into our north plot for two reasons here today. One was to check up on our plot. And you can see on the very far north side is the alfalfa. It's starting to do a little bit better. Now we've got a couple really good rains. And the south side here is the winter peas. And the peas kind of struggled with no rain for those first six, seven weeks. But they're coming up pretty good now. And so is the, the radish and the different turnips and the lettuce that's in here. And we're actually getting quite a bit of growth under the ground already. It's the first week of August. There is a lot of leaf matter in this plot for those deer to eat. This is the same spot that we had three encounters with the tipped out five last year. So now we've been watching that deer and he's wider than ever. He's only a nine point this year, but his back tines are huge. He's wide, leaned out, probably the best that he's ever looked. Well, Jared and the guys at Blackheart just finished digging our dugout and this is kind of the final step to this property. We kind of got lucky, we hit some groundwater. It's actually filling up pretty quick, so we'll probably have a usable water source here before the summer's over. Well, I'm not a big fan of surprises, but this is a surprise that I'll definitely take. We just dug this dugout on Wednesday, and it's only Saturday now. And much to my appreciation, we've got almost eight feet of water in already. There's trails coming from, well, three, three ends here. It's only been here for three and a half days, so that's pretty incredible, and we have to be happy with that. Where are we going? Uh, to watch deer. Watch deer. Kids just uh, got off school. We're heading out to the plots to see if we can film a few of these bucks and get a better look at them. And the kids said they're going to come and help so they can find the big ones because I don't know how to see the big ones. Taylor says she's the only one that can. <laughs> found love to my hunting is taking these two and watching their appreciation for the outdoors grow. Taylor, what are you doing? Eating beef jerky. We're supposed to be looking for deer. I know, but we didn't have supper yet. You guys have a restaurant set up here. <laughs> After getting settled, a few deer appear out into the plots. With a plot over five feet tall in some places, it was hard to keep track and film the deer entering the plot. But there was no sign of the tipped out five. However, if he was in there, it was anyone's guess. We've seen one of the bucks that we wanted to see. He's the big four by four short brows. I think it coyote from the north, spooked him down into the south, and then when those deer ran south, there was the, the bee plot. 
out to the south of Volunteer that we couldn't see that we seen run out the south end, so it's hard to say if the other big fellow is out there or not. Yeah. So I don't know. You wanna go now? Yeah. Like right now, right now. Yeah. No dedication. Yeah. Okay, boy. Well, we're gonna quietly get packed up and slip out here. With the plot seeded and established, and some of the homework done, Jason, Steve, my son Magnus and I headed in to get the stand ready. The priority was to get our shooting lanes cleared so there'd be no chance of a missed opportunity at the tipped out five. We then collected and hung some fresh brush behind the stand to make sure that a slight movement would not be noticed by the deer in the plot. Lastly, we put out some BB squared and set the trail camera, hoping on some new photos of the tipped out five. After getting set up, the tipped out five never missed a beat, hitting the alpha rack plot all summer long. And as the summer went on, we continued to get trail camera photos of the deer, and week after week, he just continued to grow. Early in 2015, it was apparent again that the tipped out five would be a very unique deer, but we were not prepared to see him grow week after week, wider and taller, with tines reaching out to what had to be 15 inches. In the past, having largely been our nemesis, this was the year that we had to make it happen. You're watching Dean Partridge's Canadian Whitetail, North America's premier wild whitetail show. This segment of Canadian Whitetail has been brought to you by Hoyman Premium Tree Saws. Hoyman Premium Tree Saws, the first truly extendable folding saws. With all the work done and the season now here, Mike and I were headed in again for another year hunting the tipped out five. It was exciting heading in that first day, even though the past year's failure at getting a shot at the tipped out five was still fresh in our minds. Just got up in the tree, settled in the mic, gonna try a tree to change things up. The, the tipped out five buck that he was hunting last time, he's still alive and he is still kicking the crap out of us. Uh, we tried all summer to get on him was coming out into the plot lots in daylight. Now he's been off the trail camera. He was here once this week at two o'clock in the morning on, a, on Wednesday. He went down to a nine point instead of a five by five. His five point sides probably went the same, eh? Yeah, Maybe a little bit so. taller. His other side that's only the four point, it's like it's out of a, I don't even know. Like it's, it's, it doesn't even look real. Uh, you know, the only problem we're dealing with is this is our north plot, the far side's alfalfa, the close side is the uh, winter peas. And the deer are just spread out across the plot when they come out in the evening. So we'll see. Shortly into the evening this young buck makes an appearance. But it isn't until much later that a few of the other bucks arrive. No sightings of the tipped out five in the night setting in, Mike and I pack up to return tomorrow. The next evening, much earlier, Mike and I spot one of the mature 4x4s entering the plot. And behind him we see a very welcome sight, one of the big 5x5s that had been traveling with the tipped out five during the summer. A gorgeous 160s buck who was more than happy to be feeding in the alpha rack plot. Just a beautiful deer that we were equally as happy to watch. Unfortunately, as he continued to feed and was joined by several other mature bucks, the tipped out five did not make an appearance. Well, there's nothing really to say here. For another year yet again, the tipped out five is just plain beating us. Welcome to this week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment. Locate. Learn. Set up. Hunt. Brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. The aroma is super strong. The range is super long. Early spring, the snow is just barely left. And this is easily one of, if not my most favorite time of the year, to do some scouting. Five or six months of cold weather has preserved a snapshot of exactly what those deer woods looked like last fall. You can go into these properties, walk the ridges and walk the field edges and have a complete understanding of how the deer are moving last year when you were wanting to hunt. And that information is going to help you all summer and fall long as you decide where you're going to scout, where you're going to focus your time. And when it comes right down to it, any time in the deer woods is time well spent. And you just never know when you might be rewarded for your efforts. And that's your Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment for the week.
This week's Canadian Whitetail Scouting segment has been brought to you by Big and J Long Range Attractants. After several days, no encounters, and just a hint of frustration, we decided to change things up, to lighten things up a little bit, and we headed out with the kids to a spot that they'd set up earlier in the season. The mission, a freezer full of venison. What are we going to do here? Uh, later this week we're going to come here and... Hunt? Yeah, and hunt. Rabbits? No. Coyotes? Here. No. Wolves? Here. No. Bears? Here! Here! Shh, you'll scare them all. <laughs> Kids here like coming out and setting up a spot, so it's always nice when they get to hunt here because it gives them a little bit more sense of accomplishment when they're hunting a spot that they help set up, so... They help them set up the spot every year for, for a lot of years. Like so many of us with young families, as time goes by, these days of field with Taylor and Magnus take priority, and all the inches of antler begin to become a distant second to watching the kids learn in amazement the things, the wonders of the deer woods that we as adults all too often take for granted. We got in and got everything sort of settled, and uh, probably only sounded about like 16 cattle coming in here. But the kids helped set up a stand a couple weeks ago. They wanted to come in and try to get a doe for deer sausage. Magnus is convinced that we're going to shoot a world record buck in the next 10 minutes, right? So, we'll see what happens. She was like, yeah, she was kind of spooky. It's been full. Of, yeah, it's been full of deer in here, and tonight it was really slow. I don't know if it was, it was windy early on or what. What do you think, Gus? Do we kill one? Where? Let's go check. The kids came and helped set up the stand here a couple weeks ago, and. It's a property, it's a spot that we've hunted for your well since I was a little kid. She'll make some great sausage, eh? Hey? Yeah, maybe. Every day we've been coming home from hunting the box and Magnus and Taylor have been did you shoot one, did you shoot one, did you shoot one? And they finally said that it was time to go and get one for sausage. So this one will fill the freezer and get us through a couple more months. They're insistent on dragging it, it might be a little while. Mission accomplished. Our freezer was full of venison and our batteries were recharged. So the very next day we were back in the tree and after the tipped out five again. I don't think Mike had a good time in this tree the last time we were here. The last time we sat, we'd seen all the mature bucks except the tipped out five. And to make matters worse, the ones that we did see were way at the other end of the plot out of range. Tonight, hopes were high for better results. Unfortunately though, again, the first mature buck enters from the far side of the plot. Another night passes watching several great deer, all at the far end of the plot, and no tipped out five. Walking out that night, you could say that there may have been the feeling of defeat in the air. After a summer of scouting, hard work, preparation, and now after a month into the season, the tipped out five had been unseen. It was blatantly obvious that we needed to make big adjustments if we wanted to change that. 
almost hard to imagine the tipped out five, our nemesis buck, right there as the giant stepped out into the plot. Closed captioning for Canadian Whitetail is provided by HuntSask.ca, your information source for Canada's best whitetail hunting. Hunt Saskatchewan, Canada. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Ramcat Broadheads, Hits Like a Ram, Cuts Like a Cat, Cool a Buck, Portable Walk-In Cooler Systems, Scott Archery, CBE Bow Sights, and Black Eagle Arrows. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by these fine sponsors. For exclusive content, follow Dean and the team on Facebook, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at Whitetail Dean. For Canadian Whitetail gear and apparel, visit CanadianHuntShop.com.